These are capacitors, and they're used in electrical circuits to store charge. They're crucial components in things like defibrillators, computers, and mobile phones. And as you can see, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. But they've all got two of these connecting leads, and these are connected on the inside to two thin sheets of metal, which we call plates, separated by a thin sheet of insulating material, which we call a dielectric. You can introduce the topic of capacitors to your students using this large-scale model. What I've got here is two bits of foil for the plates, separated by this thin sheet of plastic that I've cut from a bin bag for the dielectric. The whole thing's resting on this other sheet of plastic to keep it insulated from the bench. You can charge this capacitor up using an extra high tension power supply. I'm going to connect the positive terminal to the top plate. And I've got the bottom plate connected via this center zero microammeter to the negative terminal. Now, before you use this in class, it's important to determine the maximum voltage the capacitor can take before it breaks down. And we do this by turning the power supply on and gradually increasing the voltage until you hear these sparks, and then turning the voltage down until just before the sparks start. And here, I'm using about 900 volts. I'm just going to turn the power off and discharge by completing the circuit and give you a quick note about safety. When the capacitor's connected to the power supply and it's turned on, you mustn't touch any exposed bits of metal. However, when the power supply is off, it's perfectly safe. So now it's ready to use in class. I usually begin by pointing out the various components and showing how it's connected and asking my students if we've got a complete circuit. I then ask them to predict what they're going to see on the ammeter when I turn the power supply on. So let's see what happens when I turn the power on. You can see the ammeter kick to the left. I'm going to turn the power off now and discharge. And the ammeter kicked in the opposite direction this time. So what's going on? Well, when I turn the power supply on, it pulls electrons off the top plate, leaving it positively charged, and pushes electrons onto the bottom plate, leaving it negatively charged. And it's this flow of charge that gives us the initial reading on the ammeter. Once the potential difference between these two plates is the same as the potential difference of the power supply, the current stops. When I discharge the capacitor, electrons move off the bottom plate and onto the top plate. And once again, it's this flow of charge that gives us the current. The current stops when the bottom plate and the top plate are no longer charged, so the potential difference between them is zero. This is a lovely setup to illustrate the construction of a capacitor and demonstrate how it stores charge. But there is one other thing you can do with it. You can show what happens to a capacitor when the voltage is too high. 